Welcome back to Stonefield Ranch. Today we're talking about the pre-flight and post-flight plan with your horse. It's winter time, it's getting cold. A uh, couple things right off the bat. If your horse has been turned out and about, uh, they could have some ice up on them. And if you're saddling them, you definitely don't want that staying between the saddle pad and his back. So first thing we're gonna do is go through, just brush off, make sure all that ice is out of his coat. There's some stuff up top. And actually it's kind of a good sign if it's frozen up top, cause that means their insulation is working really well. The other thing I'm gonna do is make sure I brush right where that front and back cinch are gonna go, because they also will get icicles down here sometimes in the winter. So we wanna make sure that that cinch isn't going to hit that ice. So same thing over on this side, we're gonna brush right where those that front and back cinch are gonna go just to make sure all the ice is out of his coat. And then I'm gonna come up and actually hit his breast, where his breast collar is gonna go as well. Again, the, the purpose of this, and, and in the summertime, it's not icicles, it's burrs or foxtail or some of that other stuff that'll work their way into it, their coat. Um, so we want to make sure we just get that out before we saddle them. Uh, the other really critical thing in the winter, if you keep shoes on your horse in the winter and they're outside at all, I'll show you a problem. So all that ice beads up in between their shoe and it becomes like walking on tennis balls. So you want to get all that out. I'm going to clean between the frog. Just pick his feet out, make sure he's good. And I actually don't typically leave shoes on my horse in the winter. It's a good time for their feet to recover. Uh, this is beginning of winter, so I haven't had a chance to pull these off yet. They are gonna come off uh, here pretty quick. Same thing, I'm just gonna go around all four feet. Okay, so after we've cleaned out their feet, after we've brushed them off to make sure there's no burrs or any icicles or ice on their back uh, that's gonna make them uncomfortable, we're gonna go through, we're just gonna sweep the pad with our hands. And I don't want my hand to snag on anything. So we're just gonna do kind of a visual and a field check, make sure that our blanket is clean. Uh, this is a really good practice to be in if you don't wanna get dumped. So when I throw the blanket on, you'll notice this guard here that keeps the fenders from rubbing on the blanket um, is going to be towards the front, right? You're gonna have a little bit of space here. This is going to sit right up on his wither. So when I'm swinging the saddle on, I'm gonna grab under the gullet and then grab right behind the cantle. And then I actually kind of swing up towards the back of the horse and on like this. That was actually super dramatic, but you get the idea. Okay, so another thing that I'm gonna do while I'm here, I'm gonna take this blanket, I'm gonna lift it above his wither like that. If you're gonna be riding a long distance, that's kind of important to keep that pressure off his wither. This is just a little tidbit that'll keep him from getting sores on that wither. So now I'm gonna undo my front and rear cinch here. I always keep these tied up when I'm done riding. Um, so they don't drag on the ground, collect dirt or anything else. So now I'm gonna reach through, grab my front cinch, feed my latigo through that D-ring, up through the D-ring on the saddle. So the other thing too is I'm not gonna cinch him as tight as I can go, right? Right after you've had a big meal, you're not gonna come in and tighten your belt as tight as it'll go because it's not very comfortable. If your horse has been out and about, they've been eating, right? They're going to be a little bit bloated. They're going to have some air in them. So we're not going to cinch that up the whole way. We want him to be comfortable, but I'm just going to get to a point where he's decently tight. I can still get a few fingers in there. Then I'm going to feed up through, and now we're going to move to the rear cinch. Now in terms of order, this is kind of important. I, you always start with the front cinch, then the rear cinch, and then the breast collar. Um, and then when you're unsaddling, you're gonna take off the breast collar, then the back cinch, and then last, you're gonna take off the front cinch. Now we're gonna move to the back cinch. I'm gonna feed this up through. He's actually pretty tight. Um, 
I'm actually gonna go loosen the other side just because I want the center of that to be even. Okay, so another thing that I'm gonna check when I get to this point of saddling my horse is that this attachment is connecting the front and the rear cinch. If that is not connected and this rear cinch slides up and hits his flank, we could have a wreck. So always make sure when you're to this point or earlier that this is attached. So now I'm gonna feed that up through. This doesn't need to be super tight, right? I mean, you don't want it too loose. Kind of the rule is if it's loose enough where they could get a foot up into it, um, that's no good, right? So we want it close enough to where it's touching his belly most of the time, but not loose enough again where he can get a foot up through it and then cause a wreck for himself and you. So now I'm gonna go to the breast collar, feed that up through. Okay, so now I've got this breast collar fastened both sides. I'm gonna to move to the center attachment. That's gonna hook into the D-ring on my cinch. Now we can start to warm him up. So it's always a good idea to lunge your horse a little bit before you get on, right? Because if they're gonna try anything, if, if the saddle's uncomfortable, if something's not sitting right, this will be a really good indicator, right? If their, their backs are really like arched up, um, that's not a good sign. And a lot of times when, they're, when it's cold and they're fresh, they'll be a little bit that way. So I'm gonna just lunge him. See how that saddle's sitting kind of high? I'm gonna wait for him to get a little bit more comfortable here. Okay, so now I've warmed him up a little. If you'll remember when I first saddled him, I didn't tighten up my latigo as tight as it could go. So now I'm gonna snug that up just a little bit. And again, I don't want my horses gasping for air. I want it tight enough. My saddle's not gonna roll off, but I want them to breathe too. So, I mean, I can still get some fingers in there. I can still pull it a little bit. If you're gonna be roping, obviously you're gonna have to have it a little bit tighter, but where we're just warming him up, I'm just gonna keep it just a hair looser. So now I'm gonna come here, we'll take the halter off. Okay, so now after I've got my reins up over him, I'm gonna come here. This is a twisted wire snaffle. He's a little bit harder mouthed horse. Make sure we're untangled here. Slip over his ears. And then this brow band, we're gonna slip up. I don't want that riding right on the bones above his eyes. So I'm gonna slip that up just under his ears. All right, so on his throat latch, I want this tight enough to where this part isn't gonna come, because if it's too loose, this part of the throat latch is gonna start riding up really high like this. I don't really want that. So I tight, he's got a smaller head, so I can go to that last loop with him. So a habit I really like to be in, regardless of how old my horse is, as I'm getting on, I like to bring their head into me just a little bit so they're watching what I'm doing before I get on. It's a really good habit to be in. That way, if anything spooks them as you're getting on, they're gonna kind of come into you or they'll rotate their hip out, but they're not just gonna bolt and you're not gonna get hung up in your stirrup where they just kind of drag you along. I'm gonna pull his head into me, get that left foot in, swing up over the top. Okay, so now that I'm on, um, especially with younger horses, um, I'm just going to do a couple things really quick. I, I just want to check his head, do a little lateral flexion, make sure he's kind of responding to that bit. You notice he's really light with pressure. Like I'm not, I'm not giving him very much at all here. Just kind of pulling to my hip. Okay. He's feeling pretty comfortable. So we're going to go ride. So when I'm warming these horses up too, I'm gonna make just a couple of little circles, right? Even, even when I'm out getting ready to trail ride, I'm just gonna make a couple small circles, make sure they're comfortable. Because if you think about when you have to go to work on a Monday after you've been resting on Sunday, a lot of us really don't wanna go to work, right? And so we kinda have to get in a mental 
place, we've got to change our mental state to where we want to go to work. It's really the same way with these horses. We got to get them mentally ready to go to work. So just these little drills, just making sure their head's in the right spot are really critical. So I've made circles both ways. He's feeling pretty good. So now I'm gonna kick up the speed on him a little bit. <laughs> Woo! I'm, you know, if you got a younger horse or a horse that's like really antsy, has a lot of energy, even after you're done riding, um, just pull their head in like that and then come off. Um, okay, now that we're done riding him, we're gonna take him in, we're gonna unsaddle him. So now that I pulled his bridle off, the other thing that I'm gonna be thoughtful about is how I hang it up, right? I want this thing to hang on my hooks, similar to how it's gonna sit on his head, right? As best as I can replicate that because leather has a little bit of memory to it. So it's gonna naturally wanna sit where it's at rest most of the time. Okay, so a couple things. When you're finished riding, um, your shoer is really going to thank you if your horse is used to having their feet picked up. So it's a great idea to go around, pick out their feet every time you finish riding them. If you're scared to get under your horse, uh, you're going to do your shoer a disservice because your shoer is not going to want to get under them either because your horse isn't in the habit of doing that. Once you clean their feet out, now we're going to go through, we're going to unsaddle him. We're going to go in the reverse order that we saddled him. So you remember if we while we were saddling him, we did front cinch, rear cinch, breast collar. So this time when we're unsaddling, we're gonna go breast collar, rear cinch, front cinch. Here's why this is important. If you have a horse you've been working that's a little bit tight or even one that's, that's not, right? Um, if you undo this and then the front cinch and then leave this attached, if for any reason that saddle slides underneath that horse, cause this isn't tight enough to hang, hold that saddle on unless your horse has a really good wither. And if that slips over and goes underneath their belly, you could have another wreck, right? So these are just little things that are gonna keep us safe. They're gonna prevent us from having wrecks. When I'm putting my latigo up, I'm gonna feed it down until it's about probably eight, 12 to 18 inches through. And then I'm gonna take the rest of the latigo and I'm just gonna feed it up through that D-ring just so it sits like that while it's stored. I'm gonna come around the other side. I'm gonna put the front and rear cinch up on the tie strap holder and then we'll be good. As I'm pulling the saddle off, I'm gonna slip both hands underneath that saddle pad. I'm gonna pull the whole thing off and go put it away. So one last thing to remember is you've been riding your horse and you've got a wool saddle pad or any kind of saddle pad on there. So that can be a little bit itchy. Most of your horses are gonna roll when you unsaddle them to kind of itch and scratch. And I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna brush them just cause I try to keep them as clean as I can. So I'm gonna come and brush as much as I can. He's, he's not sweaty right now. It's a pretty cold day. Um, but especially if it's been cold and that salt has built up in their coat, I just want to brush that out, keep their coat nice. That way, when I go to ride them the next time, I'm not having to brush out all those crusty spots on their back where the saddle pad was. And I actually also, I leave my horses tied up for a little bit after I ride them every time. Um, just kind of gives them a good chance to think about the ride, um, I think it kind of puts things into their long-term memory bank to leave them tied up for a little bit. Also makes them a little more relaxed. Um, I usually tie up overhead, uh, high line them. I have a high line set up in my stalls. Um, so I'll let them leave them tied up for an hour or so after I ride, then come out, let them go, start feeding them. That's how we do it here at Stonefield. If you found the content helpful, please like and subscribe. There's more than one way to do this. If you feel like there's anything that we missed that we should have included, go ahead and write that in the comments section. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and like and subscribe. That would help out, us out a lot with the YouTube algorithms, which are mathematical gypsies that live in the cloud. That's about what I know about them. Um, but it'll help our videos rank better. Uh, so thanks for watching.